go there we go hello everyone Hi. my name is rain graves i think i know most of you here <laughs> um and i'm going to be reading from the four elements which i wrote with charlie jacob march simon um, and linda addison um, it won the uh, stoker award uh, this past for 2013 um, and it is still available from the publisher and Amazon and independent booksellers. Um, so though I encourage you to buy it from an independent bookseller if you can. Um, my section of this book, uh, we all chose an element and mine is water. Surprise, surprise. Um, <laughs> and it's, it's all poetry. Um, and since we were talking about the Golden Gate Bridge and suicide, uh, I think I'm going to start with a uh, poem that uh, addresses that subject. It's called Our Lady of the Golden Gate. Because they always want to be burned, I light the fluid in a blue vein, a single flame. It maps something, spitting neurons. Truth on the mountainous marin side, lie on the San Francisco skyline. Everyone treads this path, but more do during tax season. The only message from God is posted on a call box dial tone frequency, a hotline for suicide, those give ups, and the roar of a thousand minds nudge a soft, soft mind to flight. On any given night, any given night that gives. Those veins twisted in orange and tethered, people paint them end to end all year, a target for quaking nature, a great terrorist and great gray-white teeth of blood and impulse want to eat my flame, my burning dream, my me. I'm only a tourist of death, though. Inferior warrior plans have I and sadistic. I stake out artist, a stake out artist for the real snuffing, those lights going out in the world under a gold, under a gate. And it's not a pearly one, nor spiny, hot with mire on any night, any given night that gives. Rumbling fish, cold and clammy, scale the skin, the dirty surface, the only way to cross over. I'm picking up random thoughts, crushing and pinching their heads between my fingers. I don't want them to know what I know. I'm heaving anvils from my chest over the side, stoking the vein flame with envy and pride, bright yellow reds making paint, twisting me, cabled, fidgeting my anchor, skin to concrete to asphalt, a bleed, wind a flight, burning, branding my cheek. It knows I won't go over. It knows my alien wonder. On any given night, any given night that gives, I live. Uh, how many people like H.P. Lovecraft? Yes. Okay. So uh, this one's called Nyarlathotep's Nile. He came up from the underworld out of the mouth of a dead girl's scream. Her lips withered and dried even as the steam still rose from her throat and a black stem of darkness still pinned open her shadowed eyes. Those windows to the realm of Osiris. He folded himself in a dark mist, following that long, fertile ribbon, so moist and loving and swollen, like Hatshepsut's belly had been, the day he gave her a daughter through sentiment's eager thrusts. His seed slithered deep, selecting an egg, ripe and ready to be filled with destiny. In the cool travel of night, his soul singed the air with the stench of the black temple that lies beyond the gate of the Silver Key. And as he grew closer to the Valley of Kings, the smell of the blood of the Deep Ones was sunk into the stones and sands of time. It sung a single name, Neferore. And those who wept slept uneasily as violent nightmares entered minds. He wept for his queen, and then his heir only briefly. There was a task left undone, 
And as the moon was high and pregnant, he too was birthed, bursting with evil deeds, menacing a knife edge over Tutmos III in his fever sleep. Nyarlathotep was then solid, his mist hand clenched around that beating heart and lifted the soul within it clean from the muscle. Walking as a man, silvery touched, hunting done but far from satisfied, the hungry mouth of the Nile waited, mouths of the deep ones agape with needled teeth, sharp fins waiting patiently at the surface, bulbous eyes agape and golden, golden, golden as Egypt herself was ever golden but for them. In this way did they receive a silent sacrifice for his throne, the Ka of a king who murdered the daughter of a god. And after their bellies were full, Nyarlathotep went melancholy home. One's called the women of myrrh. Not at all what was expected. The swallowed men always say, looking up from the belly of the sea. Not at all what we dreamed of at night, the jutting jagged rocks long lined reaching great ragged hooks each from surface down to ocean floor. That is where you find the pearly gate, the drowned men always say, and that is where they wait grizzled, bearded, sea hags with snake fangs, a thousand suckers upon each arm, two tentacles outstretched like a wide and sinister smile, the way they hide like a lie within golden glowing eyes. They are old without age, young without youth, guarding in song a crystalline crusted oyster, that volcanic mouth agape, land of fortune, lost promise, an improvisation of myths long told above. The very lips of the threshold hushed in a curse. This, your first look upon the cavern to Atlantis. They croon and coo, those sharp finned bitches, but their claws cannot touch you, say the drowned men. They cannot feast upon you unless you attempt to cross. They cannot leave their centurion posts Scaled breasts floating free urge you to touch as the strands of their white hair reach out and caress your loins, ridicule your face. Inside their mouths, an ink black hole and death. Yet the golden glow of volcanic fire etches out from the deep behind those hags. And as the soft tendrils of yellow green bathe the women in myrrh in Atlantean magic, they do seem to coax with silver seafoam hair light ethereal skin of gold warmed gray, ice blue eyes and full blood red lips that kiss and lick the tridents they hold in their succulent hands. And when they sing their sad song of loneliness, at that moment, your purpose is clear. You must have them in that rich golden glow. You are a drowned and dead, a lost soul anyway. you another drink, girl? Can I get you another fraud? If you were one of the others, I think I'd let you out with the trash. But you brought a vintage wine, my dear, and now I'm interested. Not to say it was your father's, not to say you aren't listening close, but what is that in your gaze, girl, that makes me think of ghosts? Lean in closer, my darling. Let me tell you all my woes. Let me breach your inner sanctum. Let me touch your fortitude. If I were a stupid man, I say, I'd wander off with her. But you have a vintage wine, I say, and I have an urge to fill. What is that tilt of the head, that gentle upward brow? How swift my hand is full with another glass and your hand. Do I remember my name? Do I remember your kiss? I mean, kiss. 
as the blood run fast and furious, as your gift its knives in a tal it, at, and your gift is knives in a talisman and a cruel assumption that I would be, could be, will be, yours forever in this wine, girl, forever and ever thine, girl. My untapped vein is yours, girl. Enter freely and of your own will. Congratulations, Samiko, on the release of your book. Yeah.